I thought the Chevy Traverse Z71 was an absolute home run, but after seeing this RS, this is fire. But the price point might shock some. I borrowed this Traverse from Jerry Signer Chevrolet here in Salt Lake City. Be sure to give them a look up. Let's go ahead and check out the window sticker so you guys can see the pricing on this one. At the very top is the description and then the colors. And here is a short listing of the standard equipment. Be sure to pause it. And base price is gonna be $56,200. And there is no options, although they did give you a credit for the heated wiper park. Guess that they didn't have the parts for that. Destination comes in at $1,395 with a total price of $57,495. And here is the fuel economy numbers for the Traverse now. So yes, depending on who you are, that might be a lot of money, but this redesign is done extremely well. Here's a 2019 Traverse. Here is the 2024. So yes, five years later, this thing is absolute fire for sure. Now the RS is the top trim level and just below it is the Z71. You can get this in just front wheel drive and it does have a twin clutch all wheel drive system too, which I'll show you guys in a second. But on the front end, when you get black, you can't really tell, but you have a blacked out front grill. And here's a quick look at the lighting on the exterior and then we'll jump back over to the front end. So here's a quick look at the headlights, full LED with turn signals as well. And then on the mirrors, LED turn signals, and then out back, your tail lights are full LED. Including your license plate lights. On the side, you guys can see, you have these parking sensors. I love the one right here, because if you do park in the garage, that should give you that protection pulling in. And as far as the bumper design goes, you guys see right here, you do have a pass through right there. It goes right in through the wheel well. That's something that GM's been incorporating on their design. And then down below, very clean look, active grill shutters. There is a camera right there. Bow tie is blacked out in the center. And let's take a quick peek at the suspension. So you don't have any ear suspension options, things like that, but independent front suspension, you guys see it has a fabric material for the wheel well, which is easy to clean out. And the hood is pretty bland for the most part, but it makes up on the front end. This thing looks so good. And as I mentioned, you have a 22 inch wheel, Really nice design, Continental tires, which are pretty good actually. And these are geared towards fuel economy. And if you want the size, it's right here. 275, 45, 22. And here is the capacity, 2,205 pounds. The fender flares are painted. The trim piece down below here is painted and all your badges are blacked out too. The mirror caps are painted, cameras, and you have smart key for the front and rear doors. And check out the styling here. First off, you have the roof rails. No crossbars though, but you can add those. You guys see how the rear glass is kind of incorporated right here? Really nice design. And it has clean lines too. Independent rear suspension. And this is where you're gonna fill up at. It's just a pop open. Regular gas. And it's probably an 18 to 20 gallon tank. They don't have any specs right now, but rear parking sensors right below. And then all out back, quad exhaust. They do hide the hitch for you. It's just a very clean design. Again, here is a Traverse. And then here is the redesign. I believe they do have the kick as well, like if you kick below, and it should open the tailgate. I don't have the key with me, by the way, so that's probably why it didn't work. But behind the third row seat, you do have decent storage here. Tie downs, and this is through across too. These seats are powered, by the way, too. 
pretty cool. You guys just make sure that the second row seats are up far enough and then they'll go back up. And then you have this storage below. Pretty big, pretty deep. 12 volt plug right here. And there is a tray that is available. You guys can see some of the speakers out back too. And to put this back down, they do have a grab handle where you can push the button. And here it is in the shade. In the last video I did, I did a moment of silence for the 3.6 liter V6. It's no longer available. And now you have this 2.5 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. Now, at the end of the day, I would have expected them to use the 2.7 liter for this more sportier RS and even for the Z71, but nope, this is the only engine option available. So it's gonna have 328 horsepower that comes on around 5,500 RPMs and 326 pound-feet of torque, which comes on around 3,500. It's gonna have aluminum construction, which is pretty typical, and is only direct injection. Eight-speed transmission. Let's check out the interior. Now, as far as the interior design goes, this is pretty similar to the Z71. They do give you the red accents on both trims and soft touch on the door, like the texture that they give you here. And then there's more soft touch at the very top here. Seat memories, and you can pop the rear lift gate from the door, really nice spot. Bose sound system does come standard. And here's the kick plate on the side. Here's the passenger side. You do have auto down. We have to hold it to go back up. And then check out the dash. This is soft touch. You see a speaker right there. More of that red trimming. The glove box is actually pretty big too. And here's just a good look at the overall cockpit. Now, as far as the seats go, you do have a 12-way for the driver and a 10-way for the passenger. And that's including the lumbar because it goes up and down, in and out, obviously. Stepping in is pretty easy. This trim piece is pretty low. And overall, this does sit lower, too, to the ground. And then here's some of your controls. You have electronic parking brake, your drive modes, and all-wheel drive button. And then you have your auto stop start. And if you want to dim this screen down, you can power folding mirrors i didn't see that on the z71 by the way so you do have that for the rs and they are heated mirrors too now the super cruise does come standard as you guys can see so you have some of these monitors there push button starts off to the side this is an 11 inch screen and this one's almost an 18 17.7 inches that's a huge screen and it has that layout like you guys have seen in the escalate i love that they've done that really cool and something that you probably noticed you didn't have a lot of those buttons that you see for like your lighting you know outside on the interior and that's because they do give you your lighting here so because you have automatic headlights you don't really need buttons for them because they come on and they turn off automatically so i do understand why they did that now as far as the 360 camera goes there is that that comes standard and you guys can see this is a backup and if you want to see overhead they do have that as well they do have side view and if you hitch up to a trailer there you go also they have trailering lines let's go back actually so you, you have trailering lines and you can turn off all the lines if you like but yeah this is done really well I like the layout they've done a pretty darn good job they also have sprayers for the cameras out back so when these cameras you see this is a 4k uh, mirror so if those get dirty you can actually wash those off dual climate control this one does have actually let me put this back in park so if you don't know how to use this this is new for 2024 so if you pull it towards you puts it in neutral or if you go up you can put it in reverse down puts it in drive back to park you also have paddle shifters too but Something that the Z71 didn't have that I noticed was ventilated seats. So you have that with the RS model and it's not even available for the Z71. Interesting. I'm not, I'm not sure why they did that. Now you do have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto wirelessly. 
um, you have your climate control here and if you if you hold something down you guys see you can move things around in this menu too ambient lighting so I'm sure they have a lot of lighting that you can control and see around the interior it's nothing new basically that's something that most of the manufacturers have been giving people and then the vehicle status this is for the guys if you like to see gauges there they are they give you really nice gauges all the temperatures and if you want to move something over to the driver display you can do that there is a button here that was a heated steering wheel not sure why it came on but yeah you have this button that will change the menus in the screen here so you can do full navigation on this screen and this is the adaptive cruise control right here shows you the miles per hour then it shows you the time this is this is the main screen here but yeah overall the layout is really nice you guys see the cup holders there is a 12 volt plug there you have two USBs type C to the left type A to the right and a little bit of storage right there also this tray is removable and they do illuminate this area there's no power plug inside this area though now I wanted to show you under here because last time I didn't really do a good job of it so under this area this is storage that you have and there is no power plugs down there either so you guys did see the all-wheel drive button and then your drive mode so let's go over the all-wheel drive really quickly so you guys can see the icon right there this is basically in two-wheel drive if you don't need the all-wheel drive. But if the snow comes, you hit the all-wheel drive button, you guys can see you can pretty much switch it to all-wheel drive. That's the twin clutch setup. Here's some of your driving modes too. This is really nice. I hit the parking brake by mistake though. But you guys can see, here's some of your drive modes actually on this screen. So they have tow haul, normal, sport, off-road, which no one's going to use, snow and ice, back up to tow haul, and normal. So I'm shocked that they don't give you like an eco mode. I would like to see that personally. Now the air vents are down low, but they do give you a nice amount of air to your face if you point them up that way. But yeah, I think that this is done well. Like the fit and finish and the level of quality of the trimming in here is really, really good. Now they did relocate your caution lights up here. You guys can control this huge twin panel moonroof and then this is a spot for your sunglasses on this side you have your vanities with lights same thing goes on this side let's go ahead and check out the back no rear curtains back here I like to see curtains even though the windows are tinted I like to see that extra benefit there but you can actually lunge the seat forward like this to allow people to get out there's not really a reason to have that because you still have a walkway through here but who knows they have the reasoning for doing that but you guys can see down below single climate control heated seats for the second row occupants two type c usbs and then you have a 120 volt plug with storage down below cpac pockets yeah they did this right this seat does obviously recline and it does slide forward and back too like that now, in the third row seat, they do have two Type-C USBs on both sides, a little bit of storage. And this is decently sized. I, I would say that sitting back here would not be fun for tall people like me, but if you're 5'8 or shorter, I think that you'd be fine back here. Three across, as I said. And these seats are actually perforated. Here are the numbers on the door. You guys can see the gross axle ratings and gross fuel weight is over 6,000 pounds at 6,394. 22 by eight and a half wide wheels. And here is the payload. So decent payload for a midsize SUV at the highest trim level too. So that's pretty cool. But I hope you guys liked the video. I think that this is a home run for GM. And aside from the pricing being I mean, it's, it's priced about right. I mean, if you look at a Toyota Highlander or any of the other competitors, this is about what they cost now. And I think with the level of features that you get and the styling, it might be worth it.